Are you interested in learning more about Notion's formulas? It can be complicated at first, and in this video, we wanted to break it down for you and show you some simple formulas that can help you get started. We'll cover text styling, if statements, date calculations, and more. If you find this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. So let's get started. So the first step with using formulas is obviously you need a database. And the first formula that we wanted to show you is how to style text. So this is one of the most simple things that you can do with Notion formulas because you don't really need to calculate anything or add any fancy formulas. So if we go to the plus sign here, we can go ahead and add formula like this, and then we can click edit. And here you can now use a formula called style. So here we have style and you can read these directions here as well. So it adds style and colors to the text. Valid formatting styles are B, bold, U, underline, I, italics, C, code, S, strike through. Valid colors, gray, brown, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, and red. And you can additionally add this underscore background to colors to set background colors. So as you can see, it basically lays it out for you. So what this means is let's say that we want to style the name here name property. So we can just add a parenthesis like this and then the properties show up like this. So we can just click name and then we're going to add a comma and then you need these quotation marks and in between let's say that we wanted it bold. So we'll start simple like this and then we can do this and then it's going to bold the name. So let's check it out. So if we add a name here now it bolded it and we can go further by adding colors. So if we wanted it green, now it's going to show the name green and bold. And we can even add underline to this as well. So if we add U, as you can see, it's underline and we can add the background with the underscore and then we can add the color so we can put pink background for example and then done so there's a whole bunch of ways you can style your text properties but not only text you can even put tags in here so let's say that we wanted to add a multi-select so we can put multi-select and let's say that this is going to be called tag so now if we wanted to add the formula to multi-select you can actually just look at it here, add it as multi-select and done. And so now the tag is formatted the way that we wanted with the style option. So this is a basic notion formula where if you have other information that you want to show and then you wanted it formatted a certain way, you can do something like this. So now let's add a formula which is going to calculate dates. So we're going to go ahead and add some date properties by clicking plus here and date. So this is going to be date one. And here we're going to put date two. And we'll show you various ways that you can use these date properties with formulas. So we're going to go ahead and pl click plus here. And let's go for formula. And we're going to edit this formula. And we're going to go to date. So now you can see all these date options. So we have date add, date subtract, date between, and one of the most useful ones is date between. So you can calculate exactly how many days are between two dates. And this kind of calculates the difference. So you want the bigger number first and the smaller second. So what this means is the one that's most current first and then the one that's oldest later. So we'll show you what this means. So let's say that we wanna calculate the date between date one and date two, where date two is the one that is most current. So we can put date two, date one, and then we want to see how many days is in between and we can click done. So now if we put date one, let's say the 12th and date two, 17th, we get five. And just like we showed previously with the text formatting, we can actually even combine this. So you can actually add, for example, here plus and then days. And we can add a space here. And now it shows five days. So this is a really useful way to use date formula 
or date between. And next, what we can show you is other date properties that might be useful. So let's say that you wanted to add one week to date two. So you could do date add and you could add date two like this. And then we can add one and then week. So if there is a recurring weekly thing that you want to keep track of so that you show the next week that it's going to be valid for, then you can do something like this and done. So this would be one week after date two. So something like this can also be very useful. Also for subscription tracking, for example, if you need to show the next month's pay time, you could always add something like this as well. So now what we can do is add another date formula. So if we go date and let's say that we want to show date range. So we can do date range and then do date one and date two. So now it shows a date range like this constructed from the start and end date. So this can also be useful if you want to show the two dates in some sort of formula like this, where you show the first and second date. The other thing we can do with date is format date. So this is one of our favorites as well, because you can easily format the date into different format systems. So let's say that you wanted to show the exact time right now. Well, you could do format date now and then do HHMMA. And if you read here, you can see exactly what you can do to format it correctly. So let's do format date and we can do exactly that. So now and then we can do HHMMA. So that basically shows the hours, minutes, and then AM or PM here. So this is a great way to format it. So next, let's go over having multiple number properties and how you can calculate it using formulas. So let's say that we have a number property here, and this represents the number of pages you've read. And then here we can add total number of pages. And let's say that you've read 200 pages out of 500. And you want to conveniently show this inside of a formula. Well, you can go here and you can add the number of pages read and then divide that by total pages to get a percentage like this. And if we click done, and then you can actually click here and then edit property. And you can choose if you want a progress bar or a ring, for example, and then change the number format to percent like this. So this is also another way to use formulas where you can calculate two number properties and then show it as a progress bar. But of course, you can also do other kinds of calculations here. So and let's say that for some reason you needed to calculate more, you could also do various equations here. So you could multiply this by 100, 1000, and so on. So you can do various complicated calculations with a whole number of number properties. So no matter how many you have, you can all combine them into this one formula to calculate it. So next let's go over if statements. So if statements are useful when you have something that's a Boolean and that means that whether or not something is true or false. So if we click plus here and then we go to checkbox, you can easily check if something is true or false. So let's say that here this is showing a completion and when you check it, it means that it's completed. So we can add a formula here that's gonna show us a message when it's completed. So if we go to formulas, edit, and we do if, then you can add inside if, if it's true, then you get one. And if it's false, you get two. So in this situation, we want to check if it's completed. If this is true, then we're going to return the text. Good job. And then 
If it's not, then it's going to be blank like this. So then we can do done and we can test it out by checking it off. Good job. So you can check if something is true or false using this method as well. And this is a very easy way to incorporate formulas. So the next formula we wanted to show is actually based on how you can add relations. So when you have a related database and you want to calculate how many related entries there are to that database, you can actually calculate that with formulas. And this is a really useful way to use them. So we'll show you an example here. So let's say that this one is now called tasks. And then here you have a database that's going to be called subtask. And if you wanted to calculate the number of subtasks inside of tasks, it's very easy to do that. So we're going to go ahead and relate these two databases together by adding a relation property to tasks. And we're going to show it on both. So now we can relate it to each other. So let's just call this task one. And this is subtask one. And we can just add here task one. And it's going to appear as subtask one. And let's go ahead and add another one, subtask two. And this one is also part of task one. So now we have two tasks, subtasks inside task one. And let's say that we want to show how many subtasks there are. Well, we can click the plus sign here and go to formula. And then we can edit it. And what you'll need to do is to calculate the number of subtasks. So if we go subtask, it's going to show up like this. So you can click on that and then you can do dot length. And that is actually going to show you how many there are of subtasks inside the task. So then if we click done, you can see now that there's two here. So this is a really easy way to show how many you have. So if you don't want to show this huge list of subtasks, you can easily just add it like this. And as we showed previously with the text formatting, now you can even add some context here by adding two subtasks like this and done. And then now you can see a bit more information like this. So those were some useful notion formulas that beginners can get started with and that can kind of form the backbone out of creating more complex formulas. We hope that this was useful for you. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or anything that was confusing in this video. And we hope to see you in the next one.